Hey, good morning, everyone. How's it going today? Coach Danny Elber is here with another, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Coffee with Coach episode on this uh, awesome Monday morning. It's uh, it's uh, Memorial Day, so I know a lot of people have the day off, but that doesn't mean we have the day off from doing, putting in work. Morning, Mr. Ted. So, um, yeah, so again, these videos, um, if you didn't wake up on the right side of the bed this morning, that's exactly what these videos are for. Help put your mind in the right place, get you on the right side of the bed so that you can make things happen for the rest of your day, um, or at least try to. So, again, lately, like I've been talking about, been listening to, uh, you know, these certain one or two videos with uh, the David Goggins uh, videos, and um, he's talking about the, uh, the six-minute ab routine. <laughs> and it's funny because in the interview... You know, he laughs and the other guy that's interviewing, he, he laughs as well. And uh, he's like, everyone's looking for that six minute ab routine. You know, the the uh, the shortcut, the hack, the um, the way to just somehow cheat the system to get to an end result, to get the goal that you want. And, uh, you know, they're laughing because that's not the way it works. You know, that's not the way it works. And then I remember reading um, something in this uh, the Jocko book here, uh, Discipline Equals Freedom. And uh, it's the way of the discipline, and it's the same thing. So again, these guys have so much in common, obviously, they're Navy SEALs, whatever. Um, you know, just uh, the, the things that they've done and been through and, and the kind of, um, you know, mentors they've had and stuff like that. A lot of stuff sounds the same or is the same. So like the Jocko right here says, uh, the way of discipline, people look for the shortcut, the hack. If you came here looking for that, you won't find it. The shortcut is a lie. The hack doesn't get you there. And if you want to take the easy road, it won't take you to where you want to be. Stronger, smarter, faster, healthier, better, free. To reach goals and overcome obstacles and become the best version of you possible will not happen by itself. It will not happen by cutting corners, taking shortcuts, or looking for the easy way. There is no easy way. There is only hard work, late nights, Early mornings, practice, rehearsal, repetition, study, sweat, blood, toil, frustration, discipline, discipline. There must be discipline. Discipline, the root of all um, good qualities, the driver of daily execution, the core principle that overcomes laziness and lethargy and excuses. Discipline defeats the infinite excuses that say, not today, not now, I need a rest, I will do it tomorrow. What's the hack? How do you become stronger, smarter, faster, healthier? How do you become better? How do you achieve true freedom? There is only way, one way, the way of discipline. So yeah, guys, I can relate to that in so many different ways. Um, you know, the, uh, the harder you work for something, I think anyone that is on here or that will catch this later at some point um, that's got to an end result, um, whatever it is, on the mat, off the mat, school, uh, whatever the goal you had in mind, and you gave everything, gave up everything, sacrificed so many things, weekends, friends, family members, parties, this, that, whatever, um, you can appreciate when you that end result, when you get there, it means so much more than when it's like handed to you you know, when it's given to you, when you just found an easy way to get somewhere, it doesn't, it doesn't hold the same value. The weight isn't the same. You're not going to uh, cherish that the way you would if you had to uh, cry a lot to get there. You had to bleed a lot to get there. You had to, you know, just feel a lot of pain and suffering um, to get to a goal. When you get there, it means, means so much, so much more. Um, you know, I can use that in so many different ways. You know, um, you know, I can use that with my business. You know, Alvarez Jiu Jitsu has been, uh, it's 12 years now. We've been open for 12 years. And I just remember, you know, um, a long time ago, just wanting to teach Jiu Jitsu and seeing other people do that for a living and be like, man, I would really love to do that. I don't want to work for General Motors, man. I hated my job. I couldn't stand going to work every day. It was painful. Like it was just, you know, the people that I worked with, uh, 
as far as supervision, supervisors go, the company itself um, just wasn't good people, um, you know, and I just wanted out. But, you know, I just couldn't snap my fingers and click my heels a couple of times like Dorothy on The Wizard of Oz and just wish that, uh, you know, I was going to have a jiu-jitsu academy and start teaching. What I had to do was put in the work. I had to keep training. I had to keep uh, competing. And in the process, um, you know, trying to find some individuals to kind of look to for um, how to do a business, you know, how to run the school, this, that, and the other. Um, things are a lot easier now, I'll tell you that, way easier than in 2006, seven, and 2008 when I finally opened uh, Elvarez Jiu-Jitsu. You know, there are so many more resources, it's ridiculous. It's like the path, the blueprints are all there, where back then there was none of that. And so, um, you know, just the amount of work to put in and to get to where we're at today, um, you know, it means a lot versus, you know, I, I wasn't given um, an academy and be like, here, you're a black belt. I'm going to pay you X amount of dollars. You just come in and teach. This is your thing. And I'm going to take everything, take care of everything for you. Started in the garage with just a, a handful of students you know, shrimping up and down some puzzle mats that are duct taped together with some carpet padding from Home Depot underneath, you know, just teaching like that for months until I was able to find a different place and then just continue to just grow and grow and grow until where, you know, now I think we're in the, the, the fifth location and, um, you know, it's the academy that I've always dreamed of. Uh, hopefully one day, uh, I'm in the works to just actually build my own building, you know, buy a piece of land and do my own thing. But far as the academy and the way it looks and the people and everything that we have, it's something that I always envisioned, but it didn't happen overnight. It took a lot, a lot of years to do that. Um, I can put things in perspective with like, uh, you know, um, jujitsu, you know, the uh, students on the mats, you know, as a coach, I get to see all of my students over the years. Uh, for those that last over the years, um, put in the amount of work that they put in. The the again the tears, the pain, the suffering, wondering if jujitsu is for you. Why do I? Why am I doing this to myself? Getting choked out left and right. You know, there's students that I've seen come in my doors where, man, they just get it. You know, some students just get it. They're like a sponge, man. They just pick everything up, and it just it's kind of easy for them. You know. And uh, they do go through some ups and downs, but it's not the same as some of the other ones that really have to struggle um, because they don't get it that well. But those individuals that I've seen over the years stick with it, who they become inside, um, going through that process of that pain, that suffering, those tears, those questions, questioning yourself and doubting yourself, but keep coming back for more. I've got some students that I'll just never forget because of the things that I see them go through and who they become uh, character-wise as a person uh, so much tougher and they can handle things so much better in life because of the things they went through on the mat, being choked out by their friends. Um, it's just really, really good stuff. And when they do come across some heartaches and some pains after they've been through all that, uh, they can handle it a lot better. Then I've seen those students that did pick it up really, really well, really fast. And when they did come up short on a goal, tournament wise or whatever the case, they broke down right away. They quit. I've had some really good students <clears throat> that I thought were really gonna make it to a black belt or whatever. And they go and compete, they come up short and it just breaks them. It just breaks them because they just aren't used to losing like that versus the other ones that are used to, that got used to losing because that's just kind of the way they had to go to get through um, where, they're, where, they, where they're at. When they did lose, it was just like another day on the mat. They, they dusted themselves off, they picked themselves up, and then when they got to those goals, you could just see the, uh, how much more <clears throat> it meant to them versus the ones that I saw where it was just kind of easy for them and stuff like that, you know? So definitely, um, don't look for the six minute ab routine, man. You know, the shortcut, the hack. It's gonna take of, <clears throat> like you said here, 
a lot of hard work, late nights, early mornings, practice, rehearsal, repetition, study, um, sweat, blood, toil, frustration, and discipline. And if you do jujitsu, like a lot of you do that are watching this, then you know, then you know it's one of the hardest things that you've ever done in your life. You know, I've had so many students say, oh man, you know, I, I used to be this athlete or, you know, really good in this sport and that sport. And when they come to jujitsu, they thought they were going to be able to do the same thing. They, they weren't. And it really broke them down. And it really made them question, you know, is this something they want to continue doing? And so jujitsu will test you like that. Again, some people will look for that, that uh, you know, that shortcut, that hack to get to that goal. And then some people, um, you know, will embrace the heartaches and the pains and the suffering that it takes to get to a goal and that's what you have to do. So if you're out there, you're looking for that six minute ab routine, you're looking for a way, six minute ab routine is just an example of like a, you know, analogy of like, you're just looking for the shortcut. You're looking for an easy, easy route to the goal that you want. Don't take it, don't take it. Take the, the, the don't take the path of least resistance, take the path, go upstream and find the most difficult way to, to get things done. So when you get to that end result, when you get there, man, you'll never want to let it go. You'll never want to let it go because you know how hard it was to get there that you'll protect it with everything you got. You know, you protect it with everything you got. And the same thing with this business. I worked so hard to get to where we're at. And, uh, you know, with the situation that we're going through right now, that's why you see me on these videos every day. It's why you see me doing what I'm doing. I'm not going out, going out without a fight. I worked too hard to get here. And there's just no way I'm just going to lay down that easy and then just give up all this work, all these years to get to where I'm get to and then just be like, yeah, man, it doesn't mean that much to me. I'm just going to let it go. No way. So no six minute ab routine. Find the hardest route to go through so that when you get there, you know, you really got there. All right. You guys have a great day. We'll catch you on the next one. See you.